James, is uh, J.B. Nelson's situation a season ending uh, situation with, with his status? Like for nine years, uh, I'm not going to talk about injuries um, uh, unless they're unless they're season ending. All right. James, Coach Yersich yesterday, um, he talked about having concern with maybe some of the timing between Drew and some of the receivers. How concerning of an issue is that to you, and how can that be addressed this week? Yeah, just just more reps. I mean, obviously, uh, being able to get Trey back full time would help because these guys played a lot of football for us. Um, we got some some new guys that we're still trying to kind of work some of that out um, with all the different coverages, with the different techniques. Um, but yeah, we just we just got to continue to grind on it, continue to get more reps. All right, thanks, guys. <laughs> James, with uh, respect to recruiting. Uh, how do the next few days kind of shape up for you and the staff, and how much time is spent, excuse me, um, uh, on the guys who are already committed that you want to like you know take care of, and how much is spent kind of looking at new prospects? Yeah, probably a, a little bit of both. I mean, obviously we want to get out and see all of our commitments, and while we're doing that, then we see the guys in the area as well, um, and then we kind of map out what games we want to get to and what regions. Uh, I'll leave tonight as soon as I'm done talking to you guys. Um, uh, be out, be out uh, tomorrow all day. Tomorrow through through Saturday night, um, we'll have a coordinators and a GA uh, and a veterans practice tomorrow, um, and then um, and then the the young guys or non-travel guys they'll have some responsibilities Friday morning. And then the guys will have off off for the weekend, but the coaches will be out recruiting. James, it's been a few weeks since we checked in on Benga Ioane. He's obviously playing a ton of football. Where is he through these five games, and what's your confidence level and what he's put out there? Yeah, he's doing well. He's a guy we had a ton of confidence in, and uh, he continues to grow. Um, he's a smart guy. He's a consistent guy. Uh, as you guys know, he's, he's big and strong and powerful, uh, but he's played pretty well, and he's getting better each week. So. Uh, you know, think he's going to have a really nice second half of the year, and I think he's got a bright future. James, you mentioned Trey Wallace. How's he handling not being able to be full go right now, and how are you seeing him progress? Good. You know, he was he was really full go last week and got stepped on and tweaked it again. Um, you know, so it's just kind of one of those things sometimes. Um, you know, but he looked he looked good today, so you know, we anticipate having him back. And like I said. He, he was really going to be back the week before. James, uh, the way that Drew carries himself and some things he said, it feels like he has a selfless approach to the game. If that's accurate, when you have a quarterback who is selfless, how does that influence the personality of the offense and individual players? Well, you know, I will say this. I, you know, I, I've been super impressed. Uh, you, I'm going to kind of go in a different direction here a little bit. But I've been super, super impressed by Jalen Hurts with the Eagles and his approach. And whenever I see anything from him, uh, I kind of always forward that to our quarterbacks, some of the stuff that he says. I mean, obviously, quarterbacks are evaluated by touchdown to interception ratio, completion percentage, third down, red zone, are obviously the big stats for those guys. But ultimately, the most important stat for a quarterback is, is winning. Um, and I think, Drew really understands that. Um, you know, he's been really good handing the ball off. We got a great pitcher up in our facility of after him handing the ball off, and I think Katron's scoring and he's doing the touchdown signal. And the pitcher's a really cool pitcher. Um, you know, he just wants the offense to run well, and he wants to grade out well, which is following out his fakes after he hands the ball off making the throws that he should be, making the adjustments to the protection in the run game, um, all those types of things. Um, he wants to play well. And, you know, I think he understands him playing well and the offense playing well gives us a chance to be 1-0 and that week. Um, obviously, all players at all positions uh, would like to, to also put up, you know, statistics and gaudy numbers. He's done that at times. Um, but I still think there's a lot left uh, kind of low-hanging fruit for us, um, you know, specifically in the pass game, but also the run game, to be honest with you. So uh, he's handled it really well. Super mature guy. He was the same way during the recruiting process. He didn't really get caught up in nonsense. 
Uh, you know, once he decided this is where he wanted to come, there was no drama after that. As you guys know, he ended up, depending on which service you follow, being the number one ranked quarterback in the country and got a bunch of late offers from, from schools that are close to him. And um, him and his family never wavered. Just, you know, those guys in, in my time, whether it's quarterbacks or any other positions, they tend to be very successful. Guys that are focused on the right things, um, you know, those guys usually have a tendency to be successful in college and then afterwards. James, Sorry. is there anything about the self scout that you guys have gone through this week that maybe surprised you or that you didn't expect that you guys found? Yeah, there was a there was a bunch of really good information. Um, not only did we do on our own, just running the numbers, uh, but also across the ball. But obviously, you know, not, not anything. Um, that I would share here that is not um, available that you guys haven't already talked about and haven't already seen. Uh, but nothing nothing that makes really sense for this setting. But more than anything, it's it's really, you know, being coachable, just like the players, right? And being open to um, input, uh, being open to some constructive criticism, um, being self-aware, um, you know, I, I think it's it's a really good process for all of us. Um, you know, and as you guys know, we've talked about this in the past with the with the players and also the staff is is we work really hard to hopefully improve without having to have a major setback to do it. Sometimes people need a setback and they feel like that was good for them the rest of the season. It's really hard to do that in college football. I'm curious, you talked about scheduling a fair bit this year and in years past recently. Um, what goes into scheduling a non-conference out of your body and how does that benefit or disadvantage your team? So say this again. Um, scheduling. With a, a, non-conference a non-conference out of your body? Yeah, we don't do that. As you know, we set our schedule and then the conference comes out, so you don't know when your bye week's going to be. So that's really out of our control. How can it benefit or disadvantage your team? Well, considering we can't control it, I, I don't know how it does. I'm talking about the fact that you're playing a non-conference game out of your bye this week, this year. Um, it's good. At the end of the day, we got to find a way to beat them, uh, whether it's conference or non-conference. I think it goes back to kind of what we were talking about before. In college football, um, depending on where your program is at and what your goals and objectives are, you, you, you technically you have to win them all now. So, um, you know, again, those things are outside of our control. Um, whether we were playing a conference team this week or a non-conference team, we'd have to find a way to get a win uh, and then and then start over the next week. You mentioned coachability in response to Audrey's question. You were talking about the coach's coachability in that specific way? Yeah, so what, I, I think what I said was just like the players, the, the coaches have to be coachable and open and self-aware and being able to take constructive criticism. That's really what self-scouting is. It's, it's cutting yourself open and looking inside um, and finding out what the issues are and what makes you tick. When you talk about you know, a team that is able to improve without having that, that big setback, you know, what kind of traits do I'm, they... I'm jealous of your mustache. <laughs> it's been a lot of work. A lot of work. It's impressive. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you know, when you talk about a team that is... Well, improved... I, you start over because I have no idea what you're saying. <laughs> uh, when you're talking about a team that is able to improve without having that big setback, um, what are some of the traits that are in a team like that? And have you seen some of that you know, within this group that you have right now? Yeah, I think it's maturity, right? It's, it's maturity and, and you know, experience, which sometimes is, is hard to get people to understand. That's where veteran coaches sharing stories. That's where veteran players, guys that have been here five and six years, sharing stories and experiences of opportunities that maybe they feel like they let slip by or, or coaches have in their careers and how few times how few times you know opportunity knocks and you got to take advantage of it when it is when it is but i think more than anything that comes with maturity and experience not just in football but in life and um you know a lot of times in college football you lack that so you're trying to hammer it home constantly whether it's academics you know, whether it is, you know, decisions socially um, and then whether it's, you know, the game of football and understanding how precious these games are. I mean, you think about other sports, 
you know, they may play 60, 70, 80 games in a season, and like you can literally lose five. And in college football, you know, you're guaranteed so few games for a for a game and for a sport that we pour a ton into 365 days a year. So each opportunity is like gold. Um, you know, each each game, each quarter, each play uh, is like is like gold. And you know, you talk about it being a game of inches. It it literally is. Jim, you mentioned week one uh, after Abdul had a couple of missed tackles everyone saw against West Virginia. He's a young player, let him be a sophomore. Have you seen him develop, and where have you seen him develop since that time? Yeah, again, I think you know he had a ton of success as, as a true freshman. Um, and you know, this year we're asking more of him. He's obviously taken on more responsibility and more reps and more play time. Um, you know, and I think sometimes, whether it's Abdul or others, um, you know, you're so excited to play uh, after the whole off season. I think sometimes you you're trying to make plays happen, and the reality is, if you just do your job, the plays tend to come to you. Uh, within the defense, and I've seen that over the last couple of weeks. I think early on, it's a defense as a whole, and specifically Abdul and others. I think we were trying to make plays rather than just doing doing our jobs. James, when you got to know Tyler Warren five, four years, five years ago as a quarterback at the high school level, was this kind of what you forecast as a staff that, that he could be this kind of a presence, not only in the passing game, but as a run blocker? And, and what has he become here in year four for you? Yeah, I mean, obviously that's that's what you hope, right? The guys that we envision as tight ends here, we want them to be able to do both. And as you guys know, we've talked about that a lot, taking a lot of pride in developing complete tight ends. I think is hard, which is harder to do than it's than it was in the past, uh, based on how a lot of these guys were used in high school, either big wide receivers or, in his case, a quarterback. So, yes, but you never truly know until they get here. You know, toughness sometimes in high school when you're just bigger and stronger than everybody, sometimes toughness is hard to tell. Um, you know, one of the most impressive things with him was watching him play basketball. Um, you know, Coach Rhodes, you know, you know, was familiar. We, we talked about him last week. Um, so you don't never really know till they get here and how they embrace it. But but he's been really good and has had a great career. And we we you know, we we uh, we think he's going to continue to have a really good career, not only you know the second half of this season, but that moving forward.